welcome to my channel um i have a few updates um excuse uh any wind noise you might hear even though i have the mic it's pretty windy so i think it's probably kind of noisy um something to notice here <laughs> is this is getting a little slimmed down you'll notice the quarter pipe is missing and this has moved quite a bit and a lot of the plywood and junk that was here is gone. Yes, this is all going away. I have bigger plans. So that's one update, except I'm not gonna talk about the bigger plans yet um, until they're more finalized. But I, this, I outgrew this is basically what happened. It's just too small, I've been riding the airbag jump at ride brand headquarters and i just like i almost hate this thing so i'll do a couple quick clips of my last jumping session on here and we'll do those now Okay, so yeah, just did an X up and tried to get some good air on it and just left it at that. In that session I was trying to ride, I just even just reasserted the fact that I need to upgrade to something that's more where I'm at now. I built this after my knee replacement surgery and it suited its purpose to kind of get me to the next level, but now it's just not cutting it for me need something bigger mainly higher not so much longer and has more transition and all that so there you have that that is that update um i am going to take you into the basement and show you a bike i haven't yet to talk about on this channel although it's been in a couple of my intro clips from earlier on when i got more serious about my channel in the spring so uh let's go take a look at that bike <laughs> because it's pretty cool. So it's down here in my shop and it's this bike right here. This is a GT Heritage model, the Pro Performer. So it's basically a remake of, or I shouldn't say remake, I should say a modern take on what was in the 80s. So they used the graphics that were on the original performers in the 80s or pro performer in this case and the old gt logos although i want to say the originals had dark blue and not black but you know still looks pretty cool um i bought this bike because i wanted to go back and kind of relearn all my old uh, flatland tricks that i knew from the 80s and i've done a little with it but i it's hard i mean i'm 53 and going back and trying to do these balance tricks and some of these rolling tricks and stuff is challenging and so i haven't done as much as i wanted but i still do and I, the one trick i want to get back is cherry pickers believe it or not <laughs> So anyway, a uh, little about this bike. I mean, it looks a lot like the original 80s, but it's modern geometry. So this is a 20.75 top tube, I believe. That's what it says down here, yes. And um, uh, 75 degree head angle, I believe, or a 74 and a half or something, which is pretty much what most of the modern BMX bikes are. Nine inch rise bar, 29 inch rise kind of standard. Um, it does have the frame standard that were popular on a lot of bikes in the eighties. And it's just, you know, really cool. So, it, you know, from a distance, it looks just like the old pro performers but as you get closer and start looking at it you can see that it has modern updates integrated headset things like that um they did remake the old block gt stem um but it's threadless the old ones used to have the regular quill shaft in there where you'd tighten a bolt and there was a little wedge inside the forks and those just never really held that great um and this has uh 
U-brakes, or if you want to call them 990 mounts, whatever, U-brakes, front and back, Odyssey Springfield. But back in the day, you basically had a regular caliper that had the hole in the fork. And so the brake cable would come around and loop around your fork like this and hook up to the brake. But one of the main reasons why GT started this little curve was for the brake to clear. And I think it kind of benefited because tricks started going to where we were putting our foot in the front tire and scuffing. So it served dual purposes, allowing more clearance for your foot and the brake and all that. So it was something that stuck around for a long time. And you'll even see a lot of modern bikes, mainly mountain bikes do this. And the reason mountain bikes kind of have this curve is because the suspension fork might hit the down tube if they don't have it. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a trick to create more clearance. So if you ever wondered why this curved down tube started, that's why, and GT was one of the first companies to ever do it. Um, and it's, you still see it today on bikes. Um, it has a little bit of a layback post, which seems, you know, I think they were trying to go for that look, but with a 20.75 top tube, this is kind of unnecessary. <laughs> Um, and then what's pretty amazing are these power series cranks. These, I believe, are identical to the cranks from the 80s. And I also want to say Primo Power Bike cranks. I think this design kind of evolved and maybe what happened was GT contracted whatever company makes the Primo cranks to make these and then Primo took on the design or whatever, but I just feel like these are the same design. They look exactly like them. So um, that's something that hasn't changed. And if somebody knows more about these and what their history is, they can chime in um, if I'm incorrect about that but i think i'm pretty correct so we come up to the gt hubs these hubs look a lot like the gt hubs of the 80s um they are sealed but this is well this is pretty much straightforward because this is a um a 3 8 axle but when we get back here we even though it looks like a GT hub, it's very different. I'm going to try to get out of the light if possible. And this hub, what's really different about it is it is a cassette hub with a 9T sprocket and it's 14 millimeter axle. So uh, back in the day, this would have ran a normal thread on freewheel and been a 3 8 axle. Um, so that's different. Uh, another thing that's different, at least in the earlier to later 80s. I don't remember when we started going back to 36 spoke wheels, but 48 spoke wheels were super common for a while. So the evolution kind of went the plastic tough wheels, Skyway tough wheels or Peregrine um, plastic wheels. And um, then they kind of evolved to 48. Um, so 48 spoke kind of became the range. And then I think rim technology got to a point where we went to 36 spokes and they were just as strong, if not stronger than 48s, because I think companies realize the strength needs to be in the rim, not in how many spokes hold that rim in place. So um, 36 spokes now. Um, and one more thing to add is the tires. Yes, I don't know any of you from the 80s, you probably remember the GT logo tires. Um, these are a modern take on it. Of course, they did do this sidewall, which I'm not a fan of tan sidewalls, but I'm sure they're just trying to get that 80s look. And then um, the GT logo, but these are way lower profile and they have that little texture on them. So they're definitely a modern take on the old GT logo tires. So this tire, you know, holds up to today's standards as far as how you want traction and things like that. And actually that being said, this whole bike does, like you could take this bike and ride it just like any modern freestyle bike and you might, it might look like an eighties bike, but it's fully capable of doing the same stuff that a modern freestyle bike would do. Um, so that's just, uh, 
quick review on this bike. Um, I haven't yet to really talk about it on my channel. Um, I'll, the intro has a little clip of me doing a trick on it. I believe that trick was called the hurricane or something. I don't remember. It's been so long. Um, so that's an update where I'm at today. I know I haven't been doing a lot. Um, it's part of these other plans that I have going on. Um, I've been really busy. Um, I know I need to get out and ride this street trials bike that I made. It's done. It's ready to go. I just need to get out and ride it and do some videos with it. Um, I want to go find a cool place like a stair set or something like that and shred that bike with it. Um, bike shop again is starting to look a little messy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this drone. <laughs> um, my last video that you saw with drone footage. Um, this is the drone that I used to do it and it did a great job. As you can see, there's a missing motor. I was playing around with this drone a couple days after that footage and I crashed it and this motor stopped working. I have two additional motors that need to be replaced on it, um, but they're not just something you can pull out. I have to take this whole thing apart and this motor is actually soldered in there, which is why you see my soldering set. So tools, Got to take this apart, solder in a new motor, get this drone working again because it's awesome and can do some really good footage. Um, so that's another thing that's going on right now. All right, now I'm babbling. I tend to do that. 22 inch. That's my trusted steed standard STA. So I actually, somebody actually mentioned that I should go through and show all my bikes on the channel and maybe I'll do that because I've got these bikes in here. I've got my Ripmo AF, I've got my low side, I've got some bikes in the garage. Um, and I just have yet to go through and show all the bikes that I own and talk about them. So I will do that soon. I appreciate you supporting my channel. I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers because once I get there, I can step up my game a little bit. Um, right now with just 300 and something, I can't really do a whole lot. I can't do live feeds, things like that, unless I do them on my computer sitting down, but that's boring. I wanna do them out when I'm out doing stuff um, and things like that. So, you know, if you can share my channel with people, let people know about it. Um, help me get to a thousand subscribers so I can get to that like next level. That's kind of like the benchmark. And sometimes when people get there, I don't know if that will happen with me, but when people get to a thousand subscribers on their channels, that's when companies take notice and maybe will send you some stuff to review. And that would be cool too, because then I can start reviewing products for you guys on my channel. So I appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.